Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to provide a quick overview of Azure and AWS portals. I'm going to take you through how to register for Azure and AWS and also how you can view services offered by Azure and AWS. I will also take you through AWS Marketplace and Azure Marketplace. And finally, I'm going to explain you how you can organize services in AWS and Azure. In case if you already registered for Azure and AWS, I would suggest you to skip this lecture because this lecture is predominantly targeted for those who hasn't registered for either Azure or AWS. So let's start with registration. When it comes to Azure, as you can see here, you need to start with a free trial. You will get certain amount of free credit based on your location and uh, you need to consume that credit within 30 days. Otherwise, it will get expired. After that, for 12 months, you will get some free products. Actually, this is something new recently introduced by Microsoft. And after 12 months, there are other products that are available within Azure that are completely free forever. However, you will not be able to use that free products for production anyway. When you are registering for Azure, you need to provide credit card information for identity verification. But Microsoft will only start charging you when you are opted for pay as you go subscription or any other paid subscriptions. When it comes to AWS, when you are first time registering for AWS, you will get certain type of products and services free for the first 12 months. And there are some type of services that are free forever. Those free services you will not be able to use for production purposes. And once you log into AWS, then you can see the front end like this, where you can see all the services that are offered by Amazon. You can see all of them divided into different sections. And you might feel that there are less number of services for example network content and delivery there are only four services you might feel like that but if you click on vpc then you can see all the related services such as internet gateways nat gateways and if you want to create any watchful private gateways and all those stuff you can create within this vpc similarly when you log into azure you can see all the services that are provided by Azure on the left hand side here. These are favorites, but if you want to see all the services, click on more services. Then you can see all the services categorized by different areas like compute, networking, storage, etc. So this is how you can view services in AWS and Azure. However, these are not only the services that are available in Azure and AWS. There are a lot of vendors that provide their solutions, i.e. ready-made solutions that are based on either Azure or AWS. So both Azure and AWS has their own marketplace. So you can see here, this is AWS marketplace where you can go and purchase the solutions that are based on AWS. For example, let's say Barracuda Firewall. So if you type in that, now you can see here, you can purchase that Barracuda Firewall so if you click on here, then click on continue. Then you can define the instance type for that firewall and then finally purchase it. And you can see the price related to your selections. There are two components of the prices whenever you purchase from the marketplace. One is the software pricing and another one is the underlying AWS infrastructure pricing. So those are the two component pricing that you need to consider and finally purchase it. Similar to AWS, even Azure also has a marketplace where you can go and purchase these ready-made products from different vendors. But there is another way you can purchase when it comes to Azure. So if you go to Azure portal, just click on here and then type in, let's say for example, Barracuda Web Application Firewall and click on it and then click on create. And then you can provide all the configuration details and the sizing details based on that it will provide a certain amount of pricing and if you are happy with it then you can go ahead and create it so you need to remember this it's not only about services provided by aws or azure there are a lot of solutions that are available within the marketplace for both azure and aws and another thing i want to compare is dashboards i feel azure is good when it comes to dashboards you can build lots of dashboards so you can create a resource here. Let me close all those things. So this itself is a dashboard. You can edit it and drag and drop any resources that you have. 
and you can create multiple dashboards also so i have a lot of dashboards here you can see so you can create multiple dashboards and you can attach different tiles to it so you can go to one of the resources and attach the metric associated with that resource for example virtual machine cpu consumption and attach as a tile in this dashboard i'm going to show that to you in the subsequent lectures anyway but for time being remember you can design lots of dashboards in azure similarly you can design dashboards within aws also by using cloudwatch so if you go to services just type in cloudwatch and then click on it and then go to dashboards and then you can create a dashboard and start adding tiles to it or metrics to it but i feel azure is good when compared to aws in terms of dashboards and the visualization and the next thing i would like to explain is about resource groups in azure whenever you create a service you always need to place that particular service into your resource group so resource group are meant to group all the resources that are related to each other so for example if you are deploying a web application and you have web server application server database storage you can club all of them into a resource group so that it will be very easy to manage different types of environments like production development related to that web application so you can view all the resource groups ideally here you can go here and see all the resource groups here similarly in aws you can group all the services into a resource group but it's not mandatory to have a resource group in order to create a resource in aws so if you go to aws cancel this so you can see here resource groups you can create a resource group and group all the services with the related tags into one resource group and finally when it comes to billing if you click on here the way you will organize your resources within aws is you will have a root account which is a master account under that you can create an organization within that organization you can create organization units and against organization and organization units you can create policies and assign at organization unit level or the individual user within that organization that access policies will define what users can do and can't do within your aws account and you can consolidate all the billing at organization level also so if you can click on billing dashboard then you can see all the billing related stuff you can do a cost exploring so you can do all the stuff and one very good thing about aws when compared to azure is budgets you can set up budgets and you can compare the cost against budget and whenever the cost is exceeding the budget then you can send alerts azure also has that kind of facility but um, i find aws is very good when it comes to budget and cost management so let me show the same kind of functionality within azure also in azure the fundamental thing is enterprise agreement if you have one with your organization under the enterprise agreement you will have a tenant and under the tenant you will have subscriptions so subscriptions is where most of the time you will work so if you want to view which subscription you have access to you can click on here and you can see all the subscriptions that i have currently and if you click on one of the subscriptions then you can see all the cost consumption and you can see the details also if you want to click on one and then see the details you should be able to see it in case if you want to manage this then click on manage for example if you want to remove the subscription or change the payment method or anything like that here you can see a lot of uh, additional information like you can change the payment methods subscription rename you can do that change the partner information you can transfer the subscription from your account to somebody's account and also you can set alerts but i find aws budget related functionality is more sophisticated than this simple alerts so that's it i think enough information for this lecture this lecture is just to introduce you to azure and aws portals and how everything is organized at a very high level see you in the next lecture